Jesus said to the multitudes, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land, and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of it, of its own accord, the earth yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain of the ear. And that when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seed on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them. But to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. This, my brothers and sisters, is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. So I grew up under him. He was a chemist to be exact, and he worked in research laboratories. And he was a part of the team back in the 1950s that developed Windex <laughs> to keep our windows clean. Something that's very ordinary to us today, but whenever I see a bottle of Windex, I think of my dad. It was said my father had a photographic memory, and I believe it. He could remember anything. We thought he should go on Jeopardy. <laughs> he never did. So I inherited not the ability to have a photographic memory, but a pretty good ability at recall. And as a result, I could stand before the church and just talk off the top of my head without notes. But now I need notes because I had a stroke and I don't remember very well. In fact, I forgot already what I just told you. <laughs> but I'm so glad to be here, and when I look out, I see the community of St. Matthews. We're coming back. Yeah. I wasn't sure we'd survive. Is that the Trumbo family back there in the back row? Oh, it's a good scene Garrett, Jason, and their mother, Janet, and is it Madeline? Oh, good, I remember the names of all the children. So even with my problem, I'm glad I remembered your names. Most of the time, I don't. <laughs> so welcome this back to church. This is your home, and I'm glad that you're here today, and I'm happy to be with you. Um, when I first had my stroke, um, I, could, I didn't know anything. I lost all my memories. And I started a long regimen of therapy. And I was going to the doctors all the time. And my wife was taking me to the doctors all the time. I hardly knew what was going on. And someone came up to me uh, during that time and said, uh, Bishop Peter, have you ever practiced yoga? And I said, no, I never practiced yoga. I'm a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
The next thing I knew, uh, those friends of mine sent a yoga instructor to my house. Her name is Dr. Sarah Sandoval. And she came to teach me yoga. And I never thought I'd practice yoga. But one of the things that affected me with my stroke, because it was on the right side of my brain, is that I didn't have use of my left side of my body. And that was very frustrating. And in fact, I became quite worried because the muscles in my left hand began to atrophy. So I was scared that I would become paralyzed. And so my yoga instructor said, that's not going to happen. And look, my hand works. <laughs> So, um, oh, by the way, I'm still a Christian. <laughs> you never know how the Lord is going to heal you. When I asked Father Chinapa to preach one Sunday a, a, a month or two ago, he said, Bishop, would it be okay if I preach in charismatic style? And I said, by all means, I'm just happy you're preaching. <laughs> And so he did, and he began his homily with the words, praise the Lord. Do you remember that? Yes. Praise the Lord. And I thought that's great. I'm going to copy him. So I'm going to say to you this morning, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, we're sounding so Pentecostal. <laughs> but you're alive, and that's a good thing. We are alive because of the Holy Spirit that has been planted within our hearts. And the question of today's parable, when Jesus becomes the storyteller, he tells the story of the sower and the seed. I think it should be renamed the extravagant farmer. <laughs> the farmer wore a pouch around his uh, front. It hung from his neck. And in the pouch was all kinds of seed. And he would walk along his field that he prepared the soil for. And he would just toss the seed. But this particular farmer that Jesus talks about was just throwing the seed willy-nilly everywhere. It was landing everywhere, uh, in, in the weeds, um, uh, on rocky soil, on good soil, on the pathway. And so he was uh, just throwing the seeds out. The seed was the gospel. When I heard this homily uh, on, the, on this parable, back when I was a teenager, I knew that I wanted to become a sower of the seed. And that's what I dedicated my life to. So this parable means something to me because of that. So uh, I'm going to look at my notes. Um, I want to tell you about the gift of faith. Faith is a gift that's given to us by the grace of the Holy Spirit. And it's not something you can muster up on your own. In your natural state, you will be an unbeliever. But when you receive the gift of the gospel and the gift of faith, then you come alive. Has you, how many have had that experience? Yeah. Bertie raises both hands. I know that's true. And all of you, that's great. God is at work in your hearts. So the parable of the sower and the seed is not just about the seed, but more importantly, it's about the kind of soil the seed lands on. And so the question for us today, what kind of soil are you? Are you good prepared soil so that the gospel of Jesus takes root and bears fruit in your life? Or is your heart, is your heart hardened like rocky soil and so it's not really receptive to the seed? The seed doesn't take root, doesn't grow, doesn't produce fruit. So what kind of soil are we? We have to look at the condition of our heart because Jesus plants the seed of his gospel in our hearts and the Holy Spirit makes it grow and it transforms your life. You realize you're never alone, that there's always someone who is with you. You realize that you belong to a community of faith and you realize that this someone who is with you is the resurrected Jesus who comes to us through the gospel, which you heard today. He also comes to us through the Eucharist, which we are about to celebrate. So we become true Jesus people when we receive the Eucharist. And so I encourage you this morning to open your hearts, receive the seed of the gospel, and 
uh, encounter the resurrected Christ as you receive communion this morning. And that, I think, my brothers and sisters, is the gospel of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. 